All right, let's talk overprices, the opposite of what the Wolf is talking about before. These are some guys that the experts, the ADP, uh, their average uh, draft position, much higher than what the Wolf is willing to concede. Uh, For Russell Wilson, his average draft position, 49. The experts have him at 51. Wolf has him at 78. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas uh, his average draft position is quarterback four. Experts have him at quarterback two. The Wolf has him at quarterback eight. By the way, this is called sticking your neck out. This is called like bucking, you know, you know, just not not being scared to actually take a stand on something. Everyone loves Russell Wilson. The Wolf really doesn't. Uh, no. And so and, and, you know, my guess would be because I know the Wolf pretty well. He's about to state his case for why not. Exactly. I'll go out there and stick the neck out and say, and this is actually a really hard one to do that for because he was the number one quarterback last year, but a top three score in three of his last four years, a top three quarterback. So this isn't easy to do. Um, but ultimately when I look at every, and, and you know, he's such a high score because he's got that mobility, you get the rushing points, he's got a great arm and he really elevates everyone around him. So it, again, this is hard. I love the guy's individual talent. So it's not easy for me to say this guy's not going to be a top three quarterback. Like everybody has him, but I just hate everything else other than Russell Wilson. Um, in this situation, the surrounding talents got awful, especially on the line pro football focuses. He's going to be under constant duress, which, yes, I get, leads to some rushing totals and some rushing points. But ultimately, we saw two years ago, he took so many hits that he stopped running. He was way ineffective. I see that being a major liability again. Plus, you remove Jimmy Graham and Paul Richardson, two of his top three targets. Doug Baldwin shelved with a knee injury right now, had knee surgery. You got to imagine that could linger all season. Who the hell else does he have to throw to? Tyler Lockett? I mean, the weapons cabinet's barren. The line is horrible. And then you got a team that's really trying to go back to its running way roots. We got Bob Condotta, a guy we keep bringing up, gives us tons of good fire quotes out of the Seattle beat scene, said what Carroll would like to do is get his pass to run percentage more to where it was in 2013 or 2014, where it was 47% and 48% pass to run ratio. So they only passed it 47 or 48% of the time as compared to almost 60% this year. They really want to get back to those running routes. And it's you know, one thing to have a beat writer guy say that, but then you look at everything Pete Carroll's done. He went and drafted Rashad Penny at number 27 overall. So going and trying to get his uh, another back. He then hired Brian Schottenheimer at the offensive coordinator and said, the main reason I did that was his commitment to the run wherever he's been. Brian Schottenheimer, of course, was with the Jets for so many years when all they did was run the ball with Sean Green and Latanian Thompson. No matter how ineffective they were, they would just keep running the ball until, you know, Mark Sanchez didn't even toss a pass. It was, and who can blame him? You have Mark Sanchez. But ultimately, this guy is always grounded in a running centric attack. And Schottenheimer himself said, when I got hired, the first thing Pete told me from the very beginning was something you have to do is run this ball when people know we're going to run it. And if you lose that, we become one dimensional and that's hard. So he's fully committed to the run. You got a team again now that's committed to the run, trying to get back to those run game roots they've always had when they had Marshawn Lynch. You got a horrible surrounding situation for this guy. And those years when they were so committed to the run that's when russell wilson finishes the qb8 and qb9 respectively in the 2013 2014 years they're trying to emulate now so the the one risk with then calling him a bust is the the defense is going to be horrible and that's what you need you need a defense to be able to stick to the run and if they're going to be as bad as i think they are that's a little bit dangerous for russell will you know to say russell wilson won't blow up because he plays really well from behind um and is one of those great quarterbacks has huge fancy days when he's got to play catch up that could be happening a lot in 2018, but if they are able to establish that run game presence and they have such barren weapons cabinets otherwise, I don't like what that means for Russell Wilson. I'm saying QB8, QB9 is right where I have him ranked as opposed to QB2 or 3. All right, Christian McCaffrey, another guy that some people just love. His actual average draft position is 18th. Uh, they like him as the 12th running back off the board, which is, I mean, that, that's substantial. That's quite a good ranking. Uh, the experts have him going around 26th, their 15th running back. Uh, Your rank, 39th, speaking of sticking your neck out, 39th, um, 21 spots below below where his ADP is, um, and you have him as your 20th running back coming off the board. Uh, Explain, I actually have a good friend who is really high on McCaffrey, who's actually trying to make some pre-draft day deals to get him off someone that has him as one of his two keepers. I told him, we're doing a segment tonight on why this guy's overpriced, so I know he's listening. Uh, Explain to Willie why Christian McCaffrey is overvalued. And Willie, I love Christian McCaffrey as a player myself. Individual talent grades out very high. Last year, he was on the opposite list from me, on the bargain list as someone that was getting disrespected and undervalued. But now going so high... 
he's a committee back. I don't care that Norv Turner saying you can expect 25 to 30 touches. That's complete bullshit. And if he gets 25 to 30 touches, he's going to break down. He's not big enough. And I know he got more jacked and added some pounds of muscle and whatnot. And he improved as an interior runner as the season went on and averaged, you know, 5.8 yards per carry down the stretch as compared to only, you know, 3.0 yards per carry at the beginning of the year. I get all that, but he's not going to just get fed 25 to 30 touches, no matter what Turner or Rivera say. That's complete coach speak, especially when you go out and get a guy like C.J. Anderson. He's not going to be a non-factor. C.J. Anderson coming off his first thousand yard year as a running back and I think is still a very underrated talent in this league. A bowling ball runner who I absolutely love. A souped up version of Jonathan Stewart. Why if you get a better version of Jonathan Stewart would you suddenly erase those carries that Jonathan Stewart was inheriting? Which was again all that goal line work. He was, Jonathan Stewart was toward the top five in the league in goal line carries. I don't think Christian McCaffrey suddenly steals that from C.J. Anderson uh, who's a great goal line runner himself. Anderson a fantastic pass blocker as well. A good receiver. I see him being kind of that Mike Tolbert in the North Turner more Old. He had Tolbert for so many years, and Tolbert had 10 touchdowns, 950 yards in back-to-back seasons. I think, you know, I think Anderson does that this year to the expense of McCaffrey. And even if McCaffrey's used well and racks up some stats, ultimately you have 950 yards and 10 touchdowns stolen out of it. There's only so much damage you're going to be able to do with that. So at 18 overall, over a guy like McKinnon or Jordan Howard with much clearer workloads and volume coming to him, blows my mind. I, I like McCaffrey as a talent. But I don't like the fact that he's got C.J. Anderson to contend with. Not a great line anyways. I, I don't like that at all. I mean, putting him at 18 overall, I mean, that that's taking him over the likes of Gronk. That's taking yep. him over some real serious players that I would certainly not touch him over. So uh, good job making your case, uh, Willie. I guarantee you we'll have a response to this because that's the type of guy. He is. By the way, Willie the, guy that, Willie, the guy who got the 40 on the Wonder League test. Uh, oh, and is, and so can, can look down on my other buddy who got a pathetic 38. Tell All him right. to send a uh, little, you remember the speak pipe. We still have that app on the site. Send in a little voicemail, Willie. Let us know your thoughts to this. Give me a rebuttal. Well, once once this guy gets his foot into the show like that, he would have to be a regular on the show. He is, I'm fine he with is it. like the funniest guy I've ever met. I want it.